was something about Sarah J Mass's fantasy books that just work. I have read all of them except for her Catwoman standalone book. I haven't read that one, but these books, these series are everything. So if you are new to Sarah J Mass and you don't know where to start, which series to start with, how to read Throne of Glass, we're going to talk about all of that today. So let's get into it. It's important to note that everyone's got an opinion on how best to read Sarah J Mass's books. So this is just my own. This is what works for me. And this is what I'm just going to share on the internet because I feel like it works. This works. So if you find yourself going, I see her books in stores. I see her content online. Rowan who? Resand what? I totally understand. I was there. I was in your shoes. This is where I would start if you were totally new to Sarah J Mass. I would start with Akatar. Some people might be like, whoa, whoa, slow your roll. We don't need to start with Akatar. I think that we do though. The reason I suggest going with Akatar first is because if you struggle to get into series, if you are an impatient reader, you want to get to the goods fast, I feel like this series delivers on that. Because how many times have you seen people talk about A Court of Mist and Fury being their favorite book, one of their favorite books? And that's only book two, friends. That's book two. And if you don't know anything about Akatar, it's a loose Beauty and the Beast retelling. Maybe that's why I like it so much. <laughs> It's about this girl named Pharaoh who is basically the sole provider for her family. Her family's fallen on her time, so she goes, I'm just gonna be like Katniss Everdeen. <laughs> I'm gonna go into the woods. I'm gonna get us some food because our family needs to survive. And she does that one day. She goes and she kills a wolf. And she's like, perfect, my family's set up. We're good. This is great. But it turns out that that wolf may not have been a wolf. And she actually ended up breaking this treaty that is between the human world and the fae that live in Perithian. So one day a beast shows up at her door. Bang, bang, bang bang, 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 you broke the treaty, you're coming with me. And then she has to go off to the world of Perithian. And then things start happening from there. But let me tell you, the series evolves, okay? So don't get caught up in the first 60% of this and be like, what is Kat talking about? Like, I'm waiting for things to get good. Just give it a moment because it does. It really, really does. Now, if you're wondering about the reading order, it's very simple. You're going to read it in release order. So you've got Akatar, then you've got A Court of Mist and Fury, which is my personal favorite. Then we've got Akawar. This is the tail end of the original trilogy that she released. Then there's a novella, A Court of Frost and Starlight. I like this. Not everyone does, but it, I personally feel like you can't skip it. Don't skip it because you're going to want to know what happened in it so then you can read A Court of Silver Flames. I don't know how many people watching knew about this at the time, but when Sarah J Mass officially announced the name for her fourth book, everyone's like, "Where? where's the flow, girl? What's happening with the titles? Why isn't it A Court of Silver and Flames? I still don't know. I mean, I guess I know, but like, I still don't know, you know? That aside, we're now moving on to Throne of Glass. This was Sarah J Mass's first fantasy series. I heard a rumor, and I'm saying rumor because I heard this on TikTok and I did no research about this since. There is this rumor that she wrote the first Throne of Glass book when she was still in college. And if that is true, I love that for her. I love that for her and I love that for us. And if you don't know anything about Throne of Glass, you haven't heard a lick of information about it. Ooh, I'm about to give you just the pure basics. So the female main character is Selena Sardathia and she is an assassin and she is currently in jail. She's in like the worst jail possible. And you know, she's doing the manual labor thing, the thing that this jail is known for. It's a very brutal jail. It's like a very, very brutal jail. So she's doing her thing. And then one day she's kind of whisked out of her manual labor duties to this room. And in this room is the prince of the land, which I cannot remember what is called Ardland. Ardland. <laughs> the kingdom. And there's also the captive guard there too. We know him as Kale. Yeah, you heard me right. Kale. It's spelled like this, but it sounds like Kale. Selena is then given an opportunity by the prince whose name is Dorian. She can either stay where she is at this jail that is meant to break her, which is just so messed up. What the heck kind of jail is that? Or she can become his choice competitor in a competition that his dad, the king, is hosting looking for his own champion. Basically, he's just looking for someone to do anything that he needs, if you know what I'm saying. So she's like, hmm, <laughs> what should I do? And then she decides, I'm going to go with the prince and Kale. <laughs> We're going to head to the kingdom. I can handle a competition. I can beat some people. I used to be an assassin. So I got this. And that's where the story begins and things just go on from there. I think the biggest thing with Throne of Glass is people don't know how to read it. Should I read it in chronological order? Should I skip the series of novellas, which is now in one book, which is called Assassin's Blade? What should I do? A lot of people say to read it in chronological order. So that would mean that you would be starting with Assassin's Blade. This is a prequel book that contains five novellas that all contain information about Selena before Throne of Glass. Then you would read Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, Air of Fire, Queen of Shadows, 
Shadows, and then you're moving on to Empire of Storms, Tower of Dawn, and then finishing it off with Kingdom of Ash. I personally recommend kind of a different reading experience, but I want to say I didn't coin this. I found this online. A lot of people recommended the same thing, and I'm now recommending it to you. I suggest starting with Throne of Glass. Yes, you start with Throne of Glass. You got to see if you like the first few books. So that would be Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, and then Air of Fire. After Air of Fire, that's when you read Assassin's Blade. And some people have opinions on novellas. They're not for them, and I totally understand it, but it is imperative that you read the first novella and the last novella of that book. Don't talk to me until you do. <laughs> got to do it. It's important. Just read all of it. If you can do it, I say do it. Just do it. But if you can't, then only read the first and the last one. Please just try and read all of it. Then we're on to my personal favorite, which is Queen of Shadows. That is my Prisoner of Azkaban. That is everything that I love in this whole series. And it's just so good. It's so good. Then I highly recommend, the biggest recommendation of this entire video is doing a tandem read of Empire Storms and Tower of Dawn. And you might be like, what's a tandem read? That is when you read both of those books, Empire Storms and Tower of Dawn at the exact same time. I've linked a guide on how to do this in my description because this is just the biggest throne of glass hack ever. And if you know, if you read this series in chronological order, you might agree with me. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still feeling so many things because I can't tell you because it'll spoil things, but just trust me. And if you're worried about spoilers, if you're worried about finding out something that you don't want to know, trust me, this is spoiler free. It's just enhancing the reader experience. Take a leap of faith with me, okay? Because it's worth it. And then after that tandem read, you are finishing off the series with Kingdom of Ash. <sighs> that book is everything. Oh God. And also maybe just like a little bit of a helpful note, if you're about to start Kingdom of Ash, make sure your schedule is clear. Make sure you're starting this on a weekend. Make sure you've got some vacation lined up. Make sure you're finishing this on like a Sunday afternoon when you can do something after to fill the hole that the series may potentially leave in your heart. It's weird because it, it like leaves a hole, but also fills a hole. <laughs> like a combo and you just learn to live with it. So overall, I would say the tips for reading Throne of Glass would be read Assassin's Blade after Air of Fire, tandem read Empire of Storms and Tower of Dawn, just trust me, and then like maybe finish Kingdom of Ash during the day. Now that you were done those other two series, then you move on to her last fantasy series, which is Crescent City. This series is different than her two previous ones because even though Throne of Glass and Akatar both take place in their own respective worlds, they're both full on fantasy. Crescent City is an urban fantasy. So you've got magic and magical creatures and all sorts of like magical things set in a world where it looks like Chicago or New York. So the story follows this character named Bryce. She has had a bit of a tough life, just a tough life. She's gone through some loss and some pain and some stuff I can't tell you. And she now works at basically a museum that's kind of like an art gallery and it specializes in just magical stuff. And then one day she gets caught up in this investigation where she will have to work one-on-one -on -one with Hunt, who is a fallen angel who works for the police department in Crescent City. That is the barest bones description of that series, but I feel like the impact that the information has is just worth finding out for yourself. I will say that there's a lot of information. There is a lot to know. There's a lot to learn. And it takes some time to get just like accustomed to the world and the magic system and all the characters and beings. So if you are struggling, don't worry. It does get easier. I personally recommend the audiobook for this. It's by Elizabeth Evans, who also did Throne of Glass. She is excellent. They are such good audiobooks and they'll really help you if you are feeling overwhelmed. There is only two books out right now. The next book, the last book in this trilogy is going to come out next year. I think at the beginning of the year too. So there's not that much longer to go. And it gonna be so good. <laughs> oh, I can't even, it's just gonna be such a huge release. I remember when Silver Flames came out and like my whole bookstagram feed was just Silver Flames, Silver Flames, Silver Flames, Silver Flames. And then when House of Sky of Breath book two in Crescent City came out, the, what were other books? My whole feed was only that. So it's gonna be huge and it's definitely worth reading it now. But just so we go over everything, you read Akatar first, then you read Throne of Glass and then you finish it off with Crescent City. I am so excited for anyone that is starting these books to go back in time and start these books all over again. <sighs> 
That is a total matrix moment. Like blue pill, red pill, or whatever the pill colors were, I would be like, yeah, I'll forget the books so I can start all over again. This is amazing. So that brings us to the end of the how-to guide. I hope that this helps. I hope that you are excited. I just wish you the best reading journey ever. Feel free to comment down below your favorite Sarah J. Mass character, your favorite ship, favorite book by her. Feel free to do so. My only ask is that you don't put any spoilers. And if you do, just be like, spoiler, and then space it out. So then you gotta click more. It's all about clicking more because when you see the spoiler, that just ruins it for people. We're not about that here. So thank you in advance and I will see you in the next video. Bye book lovers. Thank you.